Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to do a quick video formatting and formatting in Excel um, and I think I'll do some problems in Newton just to kind of have some math to do that to make up the problems. So let me go ahead and get this going over here. I will, what's the best way to do that? Break. Blank Excel, let me share both screens here. Screen one and two. Hopefully this isn't too crazy in terms of what it looks like. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go to our class. I'm gonna go to our Newton. Here we go, activities, Newton. And let's preview as a student. Okay, so. I'm just going to pretend to be a student here. Um, convert the fraction to a percent. We can use Excel to do it. This is our first formatting. 47 out of 100. Okay. So, again, I put the equal sign in front to let Excel know I'm doing a calculation. Um, I press enter, and it gives me the answer, which is 0 0.47. So, you'll see in the center here, now... If you're using the Chromebook version, the online versions may look a little different. And those are sort of things that we have to navigate, you and me personally, in terms of like how to do this. Like the Chromebook version, there's no really good way around this. And it's so annoying that it's probably better just to use Google Sheets and then download the Excel and upload your submissions. Okay. But anyways, um, so I have my formatting block here. I'm going to select this. And then I'm going to click percent. Okay, so I can see the answer is 47%. So I'm going to type 47 over here. Submit. Boom. Great work. Um, just a quick note. If I do a calculation, let's say 25 out of 30, and I get an answer, and I'm going to click twice here. Now I'm in the cell. That's different than selecting the cell. So there's selecting the cell, and there's being in the cell. When I'm in the cell, I can't format anything. I have to be selecting the cell and then say, oh, no, I want this to be money. Oh, no, I want this to be a percent. Oh, I want to see more decimals. Oh, I want to see less decimals. That's actually pretty much everything I wanted to show you was those four key tools, which are right here. This comma one we'll use one time in the term, but the rest of these are very, very useful because we talk about money a lot. We use percentages. If we want more decimals or less decimals, you know, this is how we do it. These two buttons here, how we do it. All right, let me get another question. <clears throat> Something maybe harder. 20% off, sale price is 114. Ooh, this is a good one because um, it's not actually one that I typically do this style of problem in class. I'm gonna actually show kind of a, a trial and error approach and then I'll show you kind of the algebraic thinking here. So 20% off, remember the multiplier process. Start with 100% and then add or subtract the percentage. And that's based on whether it's an increase or decrease. So it's really a two-step process. So I start with 100%. It's 20% off. That's a decrease. So I'm going to do 100% minus 20%. I should have put an equal sign there, 100% minus 20%. Notice that Excel automatically formats it as a percent because it saw my percentage signs. Okay. So that's my multiplier. Now, the problem is that I don't know what the price is. I know that if I knew the price, I could just multiply it by 80%. It would give me my discounted price, the sale price. Um, I also can logically reason that if the sale price is 114, the original price should be a higher price. So I'm just going to guess. Original price... And I'm going to have a process over here. Let's get the sale price by just taking the original price. Let's say the original price is $150. So then I'll take the original price and I'll multiply it by my multiplier, which is 80%. I'm using the cell references. In the first assignment in week one, I don't really make you use cell references. It's not that important at that stage. The most important thing is getting over the hurdle of like, how do I use Excel as a calculator? You guys did an awesome job with that. As we move into week two and on, 
we're going to use cell references more and more. And the value of the cell references is, is there's multiple things here. But one of the things is I don't have to type these numbers again. And if they're big numbers, it's easy to make little mistakes. And then the answer is totally wrong because you typed in the wrong number. So cell references keep that from happening. But the other benefit is that it allows me to use Excel as a kind of dynamic tool to say, well, I can see that 150 original price is too high because the sale price is 120. So I want to go down. So then I can say, well, what about 149? And then I type enter and it changes the answer for me because it's using a cell reference. I put a different number here. It made an update to the change, to the uh, to the calculation here. So that's kind of cool because I, now I can just wheedle my way down to 140. No, it's too small. 142. Holy Moses. Okay, 142.50. Aha, there it is. 142.50 would give me the sale price of 114. Didn't take me that long guessing and checking. So that's an option to solve the problem. But I do want to point out that there are situations where algebra will pop up in this course and be useful, mostly in Newton, not in the milestones or what we do in terms of, um, you know, building projects and solving problems forward. But occasionally you'll run into problems where it's like, hmm, it would be useful to have a little bit of algebra in my pocket. So in this case, what I'm saying is, let me just show you the algebra, 80% of the price is the sale price. So in other words, 80% of the price is 114. And I don't know if you remember solving equations like 2x equals 10, but the basic concept was that we would divide both sides by two or use inverse operations, another way to think about it, because we're multiplying some unknown number by two. So to figure out what the unknown number would be, we would then divide by two. So we take 10 divided by two, that's five, and that's the magical number that we were looking for. So in this situation, 80% times the price is 114. So we can reverse course here and take 114 and divide it by 80%. And that should give us the answer I'm looking for, which in fact is a second way to solve the problem using a little bit of algebraic thinking. So the main point of this was to focus on a little bit of the um, focus on the formatting and the tools that are in the center of the bar here, this drop down and in some versions of Excel, the drop down is actually what you have to use to get to things like percentage. But in this version where I have this wide enough, I can see all of the things that I really care about, dollars, percent, increased decimal, decreased decimal. If this is money, 142.5, which it is, I can format it and it will look like a price tag. That's not a really big deal here. 142.5 is the same as 142.50. But if I do something crazy like, uh, I don't know, what's the price of gas? 3.7999. And then I multiply that by 12.534 gallons. And I, then I want to say, well, what is that as money? This is not the right answer. I'm going to be ticky tack and take some points off. Well, maybe one point off for not having the right answer, but if you just format it as money, boom, now you're in business. It's also worth pointing out that there's formatting tools here. This is the background color, and this is the color of the letters. Uh, red is fine. Hey, yeah, um, which can be useful if you want to like highlight this cell has some important piece of information, in it, like this is the answer to the question. Um, anything else I want to say? So the formatting, very useful. Last thing I guess I would say about formatting is making the columns wider. You go between the two columns where the line is, but up by the letters, and then you can click and drag. Your, your cursor should change. Mine makes this symbol, but yours might make a slightly different symbol. Same thing over here with the rows. If I want to make, say, row two taller, I go between row two and three, and I pull down, and that makes row two bigger. The only time that's really going to come up is if you have very large numbers. Oh, it made it bigger for me. Ah. Mm, oh, here it is, right here. See how it's doing that thing? That's because this 
the column is not wide enough. And so the way I fix it is I just make it bigger. Um, okay, that's enough. Just want to give you a little quick Excel video that might be helpful for you. Um, you're welcome to go back and search YouTube or my channel for Excel tips and stuff. Uh, I got a lot of different stuff in there because I've done a lot of different types of teaching and different classes, but there is a bunch of Excel stuff. Um, you know, if you miss class, it might be helpful to like go back and try to find some thing that applies to what you're doing. So, um, all right, we'll be in touch. Be good. Work hard.